Patrick. How's it going? This is the new shot. This is one of the kind of setups and angles. Um, I've obviously, I've got this tight shot here and then this sort of wider shot. And the wider shot can even accommodate, there's another chair over there if we want to do that. But with one guest, this is probably the call. Uh, first impressions being in the shot, what do you think, Patrick? It feels pro. I feel like I'm on an actual talk show. Really? Like I feel like you need uh, like Hannibal Buress over here or like <laughs> yeah. Eric Andre, Andre yeah. show, yeah. Like I'm I'm a little like stressed that this might explode or like squirt me or something. <laughs> <Right. yet. laughs> so the desk. So for people who have been following the channel for a while, this is the original table that I've been using, the same walnut table, but we just put a skirt on it to kind of, you know, tie in the old, the old and the new. Yeah. And we went back to the purple wall, which uh, was like two sets ago. But we still got some orange light. Anyway, we'll talk about it all. But the point is, uh, you're my first guest. On this, uh, on this new, I'm honored. Awesome. I'm honored you asked me to hold a camera in front of my face the whole time. <laughs> that camera's not doing anything right now. It, well, uh, it's, it's giving everybody like a look at what I see. So now it's right. like this. If you're never on the Gerald Undone show, I suppose yeah. This is the only That's... chance you'll ever get to see what it's like. Now, as far as audio, I think it's relevant that we're wearing labs, we but on, yeah. you can see there's a microphone here and there's a microphone here. This is the original. Uh, Sennheiser MKH-50 that I've always talked about is a great mic. Yep. So I haven't heard all these different things in conjunction because I've often been considering, with talk shows, normally people wear laps. Yes. And this is kind of a prop mic. This one is wired, so we'll listen to everything. We'll listen to everything right now and then we'll do more of a tour. So, so yeah, if a guest was to talk here, yeah. it would sound probably something like this. Yes. Otherwise, you're gonna get the lav from the guest. Right, which the lav is probably the best call if you wanna be moving around. For me, if I'm just doing a video by myself, I think I'd like to have the MKH-50. But I had to do quite a bit of sound treatment in here because of you know being up against a wall and having a bunch of reflective surfaces. I think it sounds, it doesn't sound quite as dry as my last studio, but I think it sounds okay just to my ears. Yeah, this is me talking using the MKH-50, and then this is me talking using the lav that I probably won't wear most times. And then this is Patrick talking using his lav. Hello, I am talking using the lav mic right now, and you can hear it from this mic now as well if the guests want to go to a room mic. There you go. But I think just having this on to kind of collect just sort of a general room tone. And also if I want to play guitar in one of my videos, it's a great instrument mic. This is the Sennheiser MD441, sort of a classic mic. It's like from 1971. Uh, I think it looks amazing, which is why I wanted to uh, have in the shot. I don't like that reflection though. I think it turned it that way a little bit. Um, I wanted to have it in the shot as, as just like, just a classic looking mic, but also it's a really good instrument mic and uh, it's, it's a mic that never really got as much like attention as I think it deserved in terms of showing up in, you know, people using it all the time. But if you look back at some old stuff like David Bowie and you'll see the 441 in a couple use cases, but it it's a great mic. Anyway, uh, okay, should we do a bit of a tour? Uh, so I'll give you a bit of a, of a lighting demo. If I turn all the lights off like this, this is with just these sort of house lights, which I left on because they actually do make a difference. They're, it's gloomier with them off. And you can see there's three of them. I put some diffusion material um, just to kind of like kill the harshness. And then this one, I actually put a reflector bag so that it doesn't hit me from above because it was giving me like these kind of raccoon eyes. That's a 600C Pro. It's a massive, uh, the Light Dome 150. And it's kind of given light to everybody in both in both shots. And then over here, you can see when I turn it on that there's sort of a book light happening where it's coming to the diffusion material. It's a 300C, the Amaran light, uh, bouncing against the wall and then coming through over there. And then above me here is a P60C, which is uh, acting as sort of a hair light. It's replacing the one that I put the, the little cover on. And it does quite a bit, if I turn it off and on again, to give me some separation, light up the wall behind me, and obviously act as a hair light. It also does something nice on the desk here. And then we have Another P60C suspended from the ceiling there, which just sort of increases the exposure of the overall scene and provides a little bit more directionality to the light so it doesn't have that kind of, this isn't supposed to be a, you know, a moody studio. It's not supposed to be like Rembrandt lighting or whatever. So that one uh, kind of fills in everything. Meanwhile, the book light, if I turn it off and on again, you can see high contrast ratio and then it gets rid of that. Um, and then as far as more accent lighting, there's a tube light over here, which is the PT4C which is just set to white, lights up that tree, gives a little bit of separation for the guests over here. It doesn't do too much to me over on this side. And then we have some uh, T4Cs on the ground here that are set to the orange color to play off the purple. 
and provide a little bit of, you know, accent lighting and different things there. And you can even see it under my arm a little bit. And that's the whole lighting setup. Now over here, uh, this is something that I'm kind of happy with. So this is, I don't know, Video Village slash my computer slash a stream cart slash my switcher for monitoring, uh, audio recording, everything's going on over here. I'm on the lab now, I guess. I don't know, I don't know when I switched. Yeah. At some point in this video, I would have switched from, <laughs> some, from that some to point the lab. We're at lab here, yeah. Um, so right here we've got the Ninja Cast, and I've got three different camera angles set up. Uh, I think we've talked about, so that's obviously the, the tight shot, then we've got this sort of wider shot with the guest, and then camera three, which is this one right here. This is if we want to do like some details of a product, or it could also swing around and be a tight shot of the guest. Um, they're all A7-4s, so the Ninja Cast takes the three different uh, camera sources here. Remind me to talk about these cables, Patrick. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then over USB-C outputs it into the computer, and then what we're seeing here is actually just OBS, which uh, you know I could stream from here, but I'm using it to be my my monitor as well. And the LUTs are all being applied on each individual camera, which comes in here, and I get this final image. And I could, like I said, I could just live stream this from this computer right to the internet if I wanted to. And you're still doing everything into the zoom. Yes, and then the mics that we talked about, they're going to the Zoom F6. So this is, I'm getting a 32-bit float recording over here. I'm going to run a 3.5 millimeter cable, if ever I do want to live stream, out from here back into the cast and sync the audio this way. I could record the 32-bit locally, but then it'll all be synced up, and if I want to stream, it'll go out to the internet that way. So, Gerald, these cables look a little longer than usual. 15-foot HDMI cables, which are intended for this kind of purpose. In my previous uh, studio, I had these cameras set up, and I was running them to the switcher, and I needed a longer cable, and so I thought, heck, why not make it a Gerald and Lynn cable? So each one of these cameras has your, I'm using the 18 inch straight versions that go from an A7 IV to the Ninja, and then out of the Ninja is the new 15 foot cable, which is gonna be available on Condor Blue as well as all of our other resellers. Like I said, hopefully by the time this video goes live, and all three of them are doing that same thing. So we got three A7 IVs, these two are using uh, 24 to 70 G Master 2s, which I just wanted a, I wanted the image to be identical. I didn't want to have to mess with it too much. This has been my first opportunity to actually, these came out, this is the first time I've built a set since these came out. So I've been able to actually put them in action and I'm really happy with them. They look identical. The color is like as intended. The only issue is that over here, I'm running the Tamron 35 to 150 because I want that reach. So this one camera has, uh, you have to set the white balance to 3600 instead of 3800. I've noticed the Tamron is 200 Kelvin different, but these two are identical. The image looks great. Fantastic lenses, and they're the ideal focal length for what I need in here. This one's 70 mil, but I can go wider if I need to. I don't need to go any tighter. And then this one is set to about 50 when it's on the tight shot, but then I can pan it over. And then on this new 24 to 70, we can go just a little bit wider like this. Let me get rid of the image on the screen. And then this would be kind of the, the two guest setup. And then that microphone that you can see up there just kind of creeping into the shot a little bit, it's on a telescopic arm from iFootage, so I can actually just raise it up vertically out of the shot to get it out of the shot a little bit for, for this angle. And so that's the wider shot. And so yeah, these 24 to 70s, not only have excellent image quality, but they, they give me a lot of versatility, and I like having a matched pair of lenses. I always underrated that. Uh, having matched lenses because I would get in post and I would tweak and every camera would have its own LUT. In this setup, it's one LUT for all three cameras. It looks exactly the same except for the Tamron requires a little bit of a white balance adjustment. Tell me a little bit of how you enclose yourself in here. Yeah, so uh, because that area is not sound treated at all, uh, generally, basically this, so we've, I, I've talked about my sort of rolling sound panels before that are on, on um, they're just curtain rods on a rolling C-stand from newer. This one, however, is a just a fixed C-stand, and it kind of stays in place overlapping here, so that if there were to be an, an operator, it would, it would likely be on this camera, and so they could kind of just, you know, sneak in here and do this sort of operation. But I don't know how well you can hear it, but me shouting into that void, there's a bunch of sound over there. So instead, this one is the wheeling part that's attached to that one, and it's like the, you know, an eight foot uh, sound sound blanket, and so we just kind of wheel it between the tripods, and he's gone. And you can even, you know, once you're rolling, you don't really need to be behind these cameras. Totally. You just tuck it in, and then from here, you know, it's I can, it just sounds it, it's much deader. Yeah, than, you, can, you than hear it. you hear a difference right away. Yeah. So then, speaking of sound treatment, you know, the shot looks nice, but if you point up at the ceiling, it's a bit chaotic. I don't recommend being against the wall 
uh, I had to just do to like to make everything work. But you're obviously going to get a lot more quick and early reflections when you're close against the wall here. I have this fluted paneling, which I think looks kind of nice. And it breaks up the sound a little bit, but it is not a replacement for a sound panel at all. And then obviously the screen and then this and everything. So I've got the old sound panels that I used before in the ceiling. There's less, I normally like to have a nice clean pattern for for the sound panels, but there's just no way to do it with all these things in the ceiling. So I just put them where I could, filled in the rest of the gaps with the foam, which doesn't generally do a lot. Panel over there. This one though, if you can get a thick one, kind of like a bass trap, this always does a significant amount. I was putting them in one at a time and doing recordings. Putting this one sort of like on the angle at the center of the wall between, it, it really makes a difference. And if I could put one on the floor, I would do that too. But I got lights down there. I, I made it difficult for myself, Patrick. I just stuck panels wherever just, I could. Just a little bit, yeah. Uh, this corner would be great to treat too, but it ruins the shot. But yeah, so now it's not too bad. It's you pretty know? dry. It's not too bad. Um, I like this little guy over here just just because. That oh, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to put a whole panel there, and I was like, it won't fit, and I had one extra, so I was like, all right, well, I'll do that. Just it's on a YouTube video that just plays like some some fun graphics. But I could switch inputs to uh, HDMI one, and it's set to duplicate. Oh, we're going to get some crazy Inception stuff going on now. There we go. But you can see there's an HDMI cable that runs down from the TV, and then it's routed all the way back to this computer. So let's say that I, I didn't have a guest in person, but it was remote. I could get my Zoom call going here. So Patrick, uh, you know, tell me, tell me about that shirt. So Patrick, why, why are you holding a, a Sure microphone like that? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you heard of a boom mic? That's right. Uh, so I don't know, is this anything? This yeah. was the idea. Yeah, I like it. So that's that. We'll you leave do, that. You up. could do Gerald's weekly weather if you wanted to, that's the daily weather. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? This is interesting. So uh, we're in a basement. Yep. So we've got windows, obviously. And I want to do be able to control whether I was going to have natural light or not, but still, but not just like close it off. So I built these little doors, just a couple hinges and a handle. And then you can see that there's you know, a window out there, but they close up real. Beautiful. Real smooth leg. Full black. There's two of those. Um, also good if you're in I Am Legend or something and you want to <laughs> <laughs> stay away from the vampires out there. Exactly. There's one more cable, Patrick. The cable that I'm using down here to keep this phone charged is uh, we've now got a USB-C Condor Blue undone four foot, uh, which is a unique length that I like. You get a lot of three foot and a lot of six foot. Four foot's the way to go, in my opinion, with these power delivery cables. Charge your phone, charge your camera, charge whatever. Uh, 100 watts power delivery. Nice little gray connectors there. Purple cable. These are going to be launching alongside the 15 foot HDMI. No sponsor for this video, so that's why I'm plugging my cables a lot. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of sponsor spots lately. I've been doing mostly uh, plugging my own stuff. But uh, I've been using these everywhere. It's Some good ASMR there. <laughs> New cable. I don't know. I'm not good at selling my own stuff, Patrick. <laughs> yeah. So that's the studio, is on this side, right? And then over here we've got. This is like my office slash editing desk. Um, similar to what I had before, but now I just have it so that I can do, you know, business related stuff. I got my file account, my printer, and that kind of thing. And then this is where I do editing. Two different ways to listen to, well, three ways. We're going to do the third way in a minute, but I like to check my videos multiple ways. So when I'm doing the edit, I normally do my first edit on just the monitor speakers, which are the Yamahas here. And then I'll do a second pass for audio where I'll throw on my cans. These are the. Bear Dynamic or DT700 Pros, which I like. I also had the 770s before, big fan of these. TV is the other way I like to watch stuff. So I've kind of turned this into a viewing room slash theater. We've got a nice uh, powered, you know, love seat with like, hide your snacks in there, you know, your little Ms. Vicky's. Is that your go-to, Put Vicky's put, original? I like Ms. Vicky's. Nice. Original is more for Lindsay. I like the spicy dill pickle. There you go. But this panel, this is one of Sony's newer OLEDs. I think this is the A80L in a 77 inch version. There's a couple reasons why I chose this TV. Lens to screen workflow. You shoot on a Venice. The expert color post-production viewing experience TVs. Control the pipeline. Sony mirrorless cameras. Sony LUTs. Color flow. Calibration mode. That tweaked it a little bit. YouTube. Match it all up. TV. My lens to screen experience. Oh yeah, so it's gonna be excellent. And then you guys are watching on your phone on the toilet or whatever. Let's put one on, Patrick. There you go. There we go. This is basically how you spend every evening, right? Just watch, right. watch, watching like your own videos. I like to watch myself. Yeah. What do you think? How, how does it look to your eye? Does it look like 
Look like it should looks look. Looks like a proper Gerald Undone. It looks how it looks on the monitors when I'm in the studio. Right? That's yeah. the point. Is this now looks how yeah. I control my flow. I don't know what you guys do, but like my the the ninjas are calibrated. The the screen that I'm have it that like the video village screen, that's calibrated, it matches. The way I do it in post and the pro art look exactly the same. And then I can watch it here and it looks exactly the same. Look good, good. How's it sound on the TV? You know? You should have a like a readme file in the description with all the color settings that's for right. TVs how to, to actually, opt optimally view your I video view it correctly. <laughs> I'll tell you something though. It's it's a bit of a, a funny thing and a complaint about the TV. I like how they have this like expert mode that you can go in and then you can get the image look looking great like just by yourself by pressing a couple buttons. But you have to go in and turn off that motion crap. Oh god. See, it, they they let you turn it off, which is good and it's pretty easy to find. But you'd think that they would have that turned off automatically if it's part of this whole lens to screen, like how it's supposed to be shot. You think the people that shot in the Venice want you to put on 60p <laughs> motion, motion smoothing, smoothing yeah, or whatever? Yeah, yeah. They do not. I can tell you they do not. <laughs> oh yeah, and it does something cool too, which is that, uh, so I have the sound bar here. Uh, if you get the specific Sony sound bar, you can get this little three and a half mil cable that you run from the soundbar into the TV and then it uses the TV not so much as a speaker but it kind of like flexes the TV in a way to give you the illusion that the sound is actually coming from the screen while still primarily using the soundbar even as a center channel. So center channel's down here but your brain thinks it's coming from here because it's doing some weird resonance stuff and you just need one little cable. Uh, there's, there's too many Sony things down here now, have you noticed? It's like because yeah. I was like... I think I see a PlayStation, PlayStation 5 right <laughs> They roped me in with like small traps. It's like, you know, with a small cable, you can make a TV flex. And I'm like, well, then I got to get the Sony sound bar, I guess. <laughs> oh, and, and it, the funny thing too is if you hook your PlayStation up to a Sony TV using the eARC HDMI thing, yeah. it knows that you're using a PlayStation 5 and it like calibrates all this. It's like, yeah, they, they're, they're doing it. They're getting you. They're yeah, figuring they're, something they're out. They're getting yeah. me. All right, I'll give you two of the rest of the space. Some of the stuff isn't exactly um, video production related, but in behind door number one, we have a gym which is not sound treated. Yeah, yeah, this is where white balance really, really doesn't like us. I wanted to have a gym down here because you guys probably know if you're video editors or whatever, you get in the flow and you're, you're really constant, you're getting, you're getting your video, like maybe you're doing a 10 hour editing session and you're thinking to yourself, you're like, ah, I should hit the gym, but you're not gonna stop video editing get dressed, drive to the gym, get changed, whatever, workout, come, it's gonna completely derail you. But what I found is that the benefit is that if I wanna do something, I just need a break, like a five, 10 minute break, I could always come in here and do a couple sets of something. I'm still doing something, you know? I don't know, that was how the- long, How long until we see like another TV in here? That's right. <laughs> And I have some reason for why it's a Sony OLED or whatever. Exactly. When you plug it into your dumbbells, it uh, motivates you, you know? And then behind door number two, uh, because this is also studio, so you're gonna have people come over and my guests and everything like that, we have a bathroom. I'm not gonna be using the tub or the shower, but sink and a toilet, that's all you need for uh, It's your green room. Yeah, exactly. And then door number three might be a bit familiar to y'all. Uh, is the shelves, so this is the furnace room, but these are the shelves that were in the original set. And uh, I didn't want to obviously have them in the shot anymore, but I, they're still quite useful. So people ask me all the time, these are just from like Home Depot. They're like, where'd you get those shelves? When in the back of the shot, like there's some rare item. They're just like some Home Depot shelves. But uh, similar setup to before, so boxes for stuff that I have and been using or whatever, like these are, you know, my products. And we've got an A1 and an A7S3, which have been sort of decommissioned from all the A7IVs. A1 still kind of like my primary photo camera. A7S3, not getting as much love these days just due to needs and stuff like that. Uh, who knows, maybe there'll be a giveaway or something coming up soon. And then, flick on a little light for you. This, under the stairs, is where all the... Uh, where Harry Potter lives. That's right. <laughs> so we've got, you know, lights, modifiers, tripods, other kind of grip gear. And if you went up on the landing a little bit and you started coming down, so this would be your first experience if you came in the drill in the studio, if you come to the studio this way, you'll recognize these trinkets, which were uh, sort of like in the lens testing station in the previous setup. Yeah, so I've still got those things there. I thought it was a nice little tie into the old one. The electrical room, which I've kind of turned into a charging station. Uh, you know, you got all your batteries and chargers, stuff, V-mount charger, whatever. And then you recognize the, the pegboard do. and the tool chest. I'm over. The reason for the new set is I'm done with the old tool chest in the shot. I feel like 
I'm, call, out. I'm, I'm calling out. you all out out there. You've all done it now. Okay. I don't know who was first. I even made fun of Dave Lee. Remember? Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. you guys putting your husky tool chest in the shot. Get out of here. So I had to get rid of it. People often ask too, like, why have the tools in shot? It's because they're my tools and I use the tools. So now they're in here and I use them. I've used probably every single one of these like 30 times since moving to the new house. I've never been able to run hardwire because I've always either been renting a place or something, and so it's kind of limited. And they put the router in some weird place. Well, this one I have control over it. So we've got direct fiber coming to the home. Comes down here. The, the modem, and then I'm running uh, RJ45 cables down and then along the side, I'll show you where they come out. In the corner here behind the sub, they're under the rug so you can't really see, uh, but I have them taped against the baseboards and then they run all the way along here and they go into the NAS and computer so everything is hardwired. And uh, I'm getting like three gigabits per second, yeah. which I had to, I had to switch Ethernet adapters. I was, I was like, the one gig isn't gonna do it. The 2.5 gig even got saturated. So now I'm running 10 gig on everything just to be able to take full advantage of the fiber. Also, I can upload my YouTube videos In fa faster than I need to probably, you know. I like it, man. It looks good. I, I don't want to leave it to the audience and be like, I hope you guys like it. Cause I mean, <laughs> it is what it is now. <laughs> it's what it is, guys. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, the amount of work it will. But, um, the main reason too, and this would be maybe some advice if I, if I could bake it in, is that I feel like it opens me up to be able to make more types of content as well. People know that I've been struggling with just making the same camera review over and over again and kind of being burned out with that. But I feel like if I was in that same set and surround it, it just, you kind of sink back into it all the time. It's a routine. I, it's like you get into a flow state, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. But I feel like here, I want it to be enough of a change that it feels like a fresh start where it's like, I can make whatever I want now, totally. you know? Just here, have whoever I want over, yeah. and we can talk about cupcakes or whatever whatever we want to talk about, you know? It's thanks for being my first guest. Of course, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. How, uh, how are talk shows supposed to end? Thanks for having me, everybody. Uh, you can see my new YouTube video whenever I feel like making it. <laughs> oh yeah, I should be like, yeah. no, yeah, we should, yeah, we should do your plug, right? plug, right? Yeah. Yeah, everyone gets a plug what's, the, uh, what's the hot ones or whatever? He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we got this camera, this camera, yeah. this camera. <laughs> Let's tell us where, tell us what you got going on and where to find you. Yeah, yeah. Should uh, should I play you out? Oh, that, I need a band. You or you know what? It's a possibility for like a brand deal. It's like I get just like a computer over there that has like art list written Absolutely. on it or something. Yeah, and it's yeah. like play them right. out. Art list, play them out. Yeah, that's <laughs> actually a good idea. That's a really good idea. Okay, so I'll start. I'm art list. Play them out. Thanks everybody. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> I think that works. That works. Yeah.